Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time for episode 3 of season 4 of Better Call Saul. We're barreling toward the end of the series here within the next, what, two and a half seasons? So, getting close to the end, or not too close, but we're getting close. I want to see how Jimmy's going to react to that letter that Chuck left for him. Those final words, whatever they're going to say. Is it going to be an apology? Is it going to be a letter of brotherly love? Or is it going to be more of what Chuck had been doing to put Jimmy down and and make him feel bad or whatever it was that Chuck was trying to accomplish? Is it going to be more of the same? Or is it going to be a a show or a response of brotherly love? We'll have to see. And then how is Jimmy going to accept that or how is he going to receive that? So that's going to be interesting. Now, like I said in a previous episode, the scene between Kim and Howard was a really great scene. And I'm just wondering if we're going to get a little bit more of that because it seems like Kim was pretty upset with Howard. And that doesn't just go away. So if there's going to be any more interaction between the two of them, I would expect some more sparks to fly. So that's going to be interesting. Like I say, all of it's interesting, but it's going to be interesting to see some of these storylines play out. And then, of course, there toward the end of that episode, that last episode, we saw Jimmy calling Mike about those little figurines that he saw in the bank. No, the copy place in the copy place office where he was uh, applying for the job. I don't believe he was actually trying to get the job. I just I think he just wanted to see if he could sell them on him. And it was kind of an exercise for him. He doesn't necessarily really want to go out and get a job, but I guess he has to look for one. So that that's, looks like that's what he's doing. And then, of course, we have the situation with Tuco and, not Tuco, <laughs> with Nacho and Gus and Hector and, and that whole Salamanca situation. And there at the end we saw, not Victor, Arturo. We saw Gus basically suffocate Arturo right in front of Nacho. Almost said Tuco again. So it's going to be interesting to see just exactly where this is going to lead for Gus, for Nacho, maybe Nacho's father. We don't know where this is going to lead, but it's not leading anywhere in a good situation or in a good place for Nacho, I wouldn't think. So got a lot going on, and I'm looking forward to getting started. Now, if you'd like to watch any of my full-length reactions to this or any of the other shows or movies that I've reacted to or will react to, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash 31mike, and I'll leave a link to that down below in the description of this video. I just recently posted my most recent reaction, full-length reaction, to House of the Dragon. I've gotten back to that. Episode number three just went live yesterday. Now, let's go ahead and jump into this episode and see where they're going to take us today. Well, that's a legitimate spike strip. Is this Mike? Yeah, it can't be Mike the way he's walking. It doesn't look like an older man. Well, they're going after that spike stripper. Is that Victor? Yep. Yep, he was going after that spike strip on purpose. Looks like that hubcap hit the camera. Oh, that's the car that uh, Nacho and Arturo were in. They're setting up a scene, aren't they? Dropping that glass. The spike strip to kill the tires. I guess they're setting it up to show how Arturo was killed so they won't get the blame. But he got out of the passenger side. Who was driving? Oh. <laughs> Nacho. What's that all in there with him? Yeah, they're, they're setting it up to 
make it look like an ambush. Yeah, uh, he's not too happy about this. <laughs> he wants him to hold off. He's going to be getting close, I guess. Or maybe that was enough. Oh, got to put some bullets in him. There was blood splatter on that uh, windshield. He'd been dead for a while. I I don't know too much about it, but would there... Well, I guess brain matter would, would splatter. Oh, they're going to shoot him too. Yeah, they got to make it look like a legitimate thing and give him I guess an out that he was in the car when he got shot that's one reason why he wasn't looking too happy he knew he was about to get shot Can I make the call now? nope they're gonna shoot him again Ugh. gotta make it look real hmm do it quick before you pass out hmm yeah pass out you might not wake up that's why he wasn't looking too happy there not necessarily because of Arturo that had something to do with it I'm sure but he knew he was about to get shot and he didn't didn't particularly like that idea not that he would like anything about that situation Oh, they got it. And? What if I told you you could turn this piece of crap into four grand for each of us? Minimum. <laughs> this little fella? I don't think Mike cares about $4,000 at this point. He's not much to look at. He's pretty easy to find. I got this one at a pawn shop on fourth for 20 bucks. Oh, okay. He has a cousin. That one is worth a boatload. And what's the difference? I gather you know where to find a Bavarian boy. I do indeed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Mike cares necessarily about $4,000 at this point. Yes. Because <laughs> he doesn't care about 4000 And he's not a petty thief. Not for you? Is it Plan's fine as far as it goes. It's just not for me. And I don't think it should be for you either. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry about your brother. <laughs> Mike showing a little bit of thought for Jimmy. I don't think it's for you too. For you either. Uh, see you around. You take it easy. <laughs> yeah, Mike's showing a little bit of thought, a little bit of care there for him, telling him he didn't think it was for him either, yes, that he shouldn't be doing it. I was wondering if Dr. Keltera had any openings today. As soon as possible, I have a very sick fish. No autopsy. Like I said, they don't want it linked back to them. Thanks. And, uh... Thanks again for the lift. It's outside your job description, I know. It's no problem. Here's what I'm thinking. Looking at the competition, one opportunity stands out. They don't... He and the family really appreciated the arrangement you sent for the funeral. Good. We're glad to hear. Uh, Kevin, you remember we're meeting the board at noon to go over Kim's recommendation. Uh, did she have a really have a broken arm and they just wrote that into the show? Or is that cast just a, a prop? Kim, you have got to see the models. Models? Uh, Hmm. Bank models. Takes your breath away, doesn't it? <laughs> Sedona, Pueblo, Colorado. You'd think they'd want the yeah, same well, architecture throughout. A lot of times that, these big one out Las Vegas. Nevada, companies want Reno uniformity, Lubbock, not Texas. individuality. That's a cool-looking building. She's starting to feel a little bit over her head here because they want to expand so big. See here? We're going to go ahead. Kim, this is what it's all about. So, I can get the notes to you by EOD if I Yeah, she's not looking too confident or something here. Oh, this is that vet that sets up jobs. Yeah, once, once. Hmm. 
Hmm. <laughs> Jimmy's having a hard time finding somebody to do it. Or no, do you shit gold? How long does it take for you to pick a Yale three pin? Well, then in eight minutes, you're going to make four grand. Ten minutes if you decide to pick your nose in, out, <laughs> no one comes looking for you ever. How does that sound? See, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job, but. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. I guess the cousins don't know Jimmy. Oh, they're bringing Nacho in. Pulse is good. Now, sniff test says you probably didn't perforate your bowel. Oh, that's what he was checking. Now, if this starts to leak, you're going to get the worst infection of your life. It's going to hurt like hell, and then you're going to die. <laughs> Do the cousins speak English? I don't know if we've ever known that. Now understand this. I never want to see you again. <laughs> this cartel shit is too hot for me. Hmm. I don't think you can get off that easy. They've got somebody they can go to. they pretty well going to keep him. Oh, this is the copier place. And he's in. That was a lot less than eight minutes. And there it is. Oh, I was looking at the one on the left. Is he going to get the right one? Yeah, I guess he's comparing it. It'd be funny if he got the wrong one. Ooh, <laughs> somebody's there. Oh, I guess he's living in his office. Good thing he was in the bathroom when the guy came in. Oh, but he left the door open. Oh, and he's not even noticing. So if I got up and came out of the bathroom and all of a sudden my door was open, alarm bells would be going off if I knew I didn't leave it open. Hello. Are you still delivering? <laughs> He's ordering some food. <laughs> uh, oh, he left his gloves yeah, up there. Just a large cheese. Yes, sliced, please. Could you also throw in some dipping sticks? Sliced. Two ranch. That's the place that uh, Walt threw the pizza up on the roof and it was unsliced. I was thinking about that slice, but I've never ordered sliced pizza. This is a guy calling to tell him he's stuck. Look, the office guy. He's oh, he got here. his gloves. What? He's dug in for the night, man. Come get me. Or, or come get me. <laughs> come get me. Urgency comes from the environment. It presses upon you. It's proximate. It's right in front of you. And it's often very popular. It could be deep. Well, he can at least get out of the office there now, and he can be out there in the showroom. I'd be a little more concerned about that alarm going off if that was my car. <laughs> hey! So what did Jimmy hotwire it and put it in reverse? Yep. He's out of there. <laughs> Pretty good. Hey. Hey, so did you get it? Shit was pretty slick. Yeah, it was pretty slick. Hmm. Yeah, we know who. I barely, but he couldn't see faces. Done one. We are about to run another shipment. 
If you think we're compromised, then no product draws us until we're certain. I'll take care of it. How long before our dealers run dry? No more than a week. Hmm. Gus is going to have to set up a supply in New Mexico. I wonder who he could get to make some stuff for him. Find a local supplier on your side of the border. See? <laughs> They're setting it up. I don't know how many years we are away from Breaking Bad, but I was just thinking that, that he needs to find a way to get a supplier in the in the New Mexico. Neptunium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and golden protactinium, and indium, and gallium. They range from 39% to 58% pure, except this one, which hovers around 67. You should tell the chemist to check his or her cookware. It's introducing contamination. Oh, well, thank you very much, Gail. That's oh, very Gail. information. I thought I recognized well, him, but I didn't know from what. Gail. He didn't have a beard in Breaking Bad, did he? These samples aren't great. I could do much better. <laughs> much higher grade. I could make a kilo or more right here. No one would know. Wouldn't take more than a few days. Not yet. <laughs> you were meant to Not yet. for better things. I'll see you soon, Cam. Yeah, I don't remember. Did he have a beard in Breaking Bad? Does she know he was out late? Oh, the letter. Is that what that is? I almost forgot about that letter. Jimmy, there's just a couple of things from talking to Howard that maybe we ought to go through. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now let's get it over with. That's right. Know, also, the check for 4000 right? 5000 Yeah. Uh, this is a release. It says basically that you won't contest the will. If I sign it, I get my share. That's about mm. the size of it. <laughs> yeah, but what what about the size of it? <laughs> How much do I get? Five thousand. Pay off my Mastercard. <laughs> well, he's not too upset about it. What else you got? Um, this is it's from Chuck. Nobody knows for sure what's in it. You don't have to open it right now, but... Let's hmm. see what the old boy has to say. Yeah, let's see what he had to say. Oh. It's undated. Yeah, so how old is it? Dear Jimmy, I have left many things unsaid in our relationship through the years. Rather than allow, allow these unspoken thoughts to die with me, I've chosen to record them here for you. Hmm. I hope you will take my words in the spirit in which they are intended. It's not going to be good. I remember quite clearly the day you came home from the hospital. You can't imagine the joy on mom's face. I can honestly say I never saw her happier than she was on that day. He brought a shine to her life that nothing else ever did, and I'm glad That's of that. That's nice. If we have not always seen eye to eye, I expect that will continue to be so in the future. However, nothing will ever change the fact that we are brothers. And though we are very different people, I want you to know how much I respect what you have made of yourself in these last mm. few years. Not bad. You've taken the opportunity I gave you in the mailroom. And you have run with it. Becoming a valued member of the HHM family for all the problems in your past. I'm proud we share the name McGill. So this is an old letter. Sincerely admire your energy and resilience. I used oh, to worry about upset. you finding a place in the world. But I'm not worried about that anymore. And I hope when you read this, you remember me not only as your brother, but as a person you knew was always in your corner. He signed it just Chuck. Hmm. Well, say what you want. Man could write a letter. Yeah, that was a nice letter, but it's old because he was still working at the mailroom apparently. Hey, no, I didn't. I didn't mean to make it. No, a it's okay. It's okay. It's a nice letter. Just give me. Just give me a minute. She took it harder than I thought she would. Well, it, was, it wasn't a bad letter. I, I wasn't sure if Chuck was going to rip into him and tell him one last time what he thought of him. 
or if it was going to be a nice letter saying, you know, I'm sorry or whatever. But apparently that was a, a letter that he had written before Jimmy became a lawyer. So it's a, a fairly old letter. Although I don't know how long it's been since Jimmy's been a lawyer. I don't know if they've ever told us that. But this was apparently written before he became a lawyer and before some of the resentments, I guess, really started to come to the surface with Chuck. Well, Jimmy got his little figurine there, so I guess they're going to take it and sell it and make a few bucks. And it's not a surprise that Mike wasn't too interested in it. Easy money, but Mike already has easy money that that he doesn't have to worry about $4,000 and worry about breaking in someplace. He's not really a petty theft kind of guy. Now with Nacho, he's not in a good situation. And it looks like he's going to be okay from those bullet wounds. But he is under Gus's thumb now, it looks like. And of course, Gus is setting this all up. We're seeing the beginnings of Gus setting things up to where we know he will eventually end up. Well, not end up. We know where he's going to end up. But we know where it's leading. And that's leading toward Walt and Jesse and a different colored product. Blue, to be specific. So... And then we, we see Gail. Gail was introduced here. So, like I say, we can see the beginnings. We know where it's headed. I think it was a brilliant way that they structured this series, the way they've kind of commingled the two stories, but they're starting at a, a beginning point that's well away from Breaking Bad. And now as they go along, they're starting to commingle it to where you can see the beginning threads to where we know where we're going to be leading. So it's a brilliant a brilliant piece of writing on their parts and a brilliant piece of creativity. So I'm really looking forward to getting through the rest of this season and the rest of the series and seeing where it's going to go. And then after that, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch Breaking Bad, of course. So it's going to be fun. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you have any thoughts or observations about this episode that maybe I missed or I got wrong, please leave some comments down below. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe and be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on episode number four.